I'm Jeremy. Welcome to another episode of Practical IT. In episode 22, we took a look at installing from the ISO image a new virtual machine of Open Media Vault 4.0.9, which was recently released in November of 2017. In this episode, we're going to build upon that base. We're going to enable some users, shared folders, and some network services so that we can actually access our Open Media Vault from other computers. So let's get started and see how we accomplish this. All right, we'll bring up our Chrome. Uh, we'll bring up our Open Media Vault window in Chrome. All right, so what you're seeing right now is the dashboard interface for Open Media Vault 4. As you can see, the only service that is currently running and enabled is SSH, which means we can only connect to this via the command line. At the bottom of the screen, you'll also see some system information. So from here, we can get started on making this a more usable system. So first of all, let's add a new user. So we'll come over here under Access Rights Management, add a user, and give the person a name. Let's see, account name. All right, now we've done that. We will go ahead and save this new user. And we'll have to apply and say yes. All right, so we've got our user. Now we should add a shared folder. We've got a shared folder under Access Rights Management and go to Add. And we will just call this test folder. Select our device. And that's going to be test store, which is our RAID volume that we created in the last video. And our path is going to be test folder. Permissions. Uh, administrator read write, users read write, others that'll be read only. That's fine comments folder created for practical IT so 23 and we can save that and we'll need to go ahead and apply that as well Let's say yes okay so we've added a user we've added a shared folder now we need to make this available and the most common way to do this currently is using SMB or SIFS. So we'll go ahead and click on that. We'll come back to settings. We'll, we'll say enable. Browsable. That all looks good. We'll save this here first and apply that. And we'll check shares again, enabled, test folder, public no, read only no, browsable yes. So that automatically created that for us. And we'll say save there again. Okay, 
go to dashboard. And we can now see that we've got SMB SIFs enabled and running. So let's go ahead. We'll minimize our Chrome window. We'll go to Finder and slide this over here. And then we'll go to the Go menu. Connect to server. And we'll say 58, which is our server. Say connect. Attempting to connect, we'll say connect. And it will prompt for a username and password. We'll enter what we entered in our Open Media Vault. And we should connect. So now we've got a new, get rid of this. We've got test folder here at the top. And if we scroll down the left side, we will see our new server, 172.16.74.58. Now we can treat this like any other volume on the Mac. And we can say uh, made on Mac and hit enter. So we've now created a new folder in that shared volume. But what if you're a Windows user? Well, I've got a solution for that too. So we'll launch Splash Top Business and under my computers I will connect to my Acer laptop and well of course there's a an update we'll say remind me later and need to control alt delete and enter password and we can go to Windows Explorer and we can simply enter 172.16.74.58 and hit enter it'll prompt us like it did before test folder we go into that and we've got made on Mac and we can say new folder made on Windows all right so now we can go in here if we wanted to and we can say new we could say we want a new text document. My text. We can open that up. And go ahead and exit out of that. Save it. Uh, we can disconnect from our Windows machine and if we looked we see here that we've now got made on Windows and we can open up the text file and say this file has been modified on Mac OS. I guess I should lowercase the M because that's the way Apple wants it these days. So we can exit out of this and save it. Oh, this is interesting. 
Uh, does not support permanent version storage. Your changes have been saved and you will not be able to access older versions of this document. So basically it's saying that it doesn't support the max version management on the remote disk. We'll say okay to that. And of course we're getting our preview of the file right here. Let's go ahead and close Finder. We'll jump back over to Chrome and our session has expired. And we'll have to log in again. And if we look at file systems again, you will now see that we've used a little bit more. It's just still just a small green sliver there. Um, but we have used a little bit there on our new system. All right. So we've showed that we can now connect with a Windows machine and a Mac machine. But what else can we do with this? Well, we're not going to get to everything in this video, but uh, some of the things that you can do, we previously looked at update management, and right now there are no updates, but plugins is another interesting piece. So you, these are all installable plugins and so some of the ones that are interesting here are the open media vault usb or eSATA backup plugin now if you're at all familiar with pre-built nas appliances you will know that many of them include a usb port where you can plug in a usb drive whether it be a thumb drive or an uh, external hard drive and it will automatically back up. This plugin allows the same thing. Now, since we're on a virtual machine and not on a actual physical box, this is not something that's terribly useful for us right at the moment. Looking at some of the other options, there's Open Media Vault Logical Volume Manager plugin which if you're going to deal with multiple disks and you want to make them look like one large disk, this is a useful plugin. Uh, a, an iTunes compatible digital audio access protocol media server. Even though I'm a Mac user, I do not use iTunes. There's an AirPlay receiver plugin again not something that I use uh, LDAP uh, which is lightweight directory access protocol um, and this is uh, like it says an application protocol for accessing and maintaining distributed directory information services on a network You've got some routing. You've got the SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol plugin, which can be useful for some people. Uh, Netatalk, which uses the older Apple Talk protocol, a TFTP server. You've got antivirus. And the last one down here at the bottom is NUT, which is the Network UPS Tools plugin. So if you had a physical box with an uninterruptible power supply, this would allow Open Media Vault to talk to that UPS and in the case of a power outage, to shut down Open Media Vault properly so that you don't lose data. So there are the other things that you can set up, of course. There are notifications. So if you want email notifications to be sent, you can set that up. 
there's some monitoring information and so this is enabled by default you can of course add other users you could add groups as well uh, you can also enable services like FTP file transfer protocol NFS network file system and rsync which is a very popular very powerful syncing system you can view system logs and we've got a link to take us back to our dashboard hopefully you found this look at the new version of open media vault 4 useful uh, as you can see on the screen this is version 4.0.9-1 as new updates new major updates become available we will circle around and take another look at open media vault if you have something in particular you would like to see related to open media vault please leave that down in the comments and that will very likely become part of a future video on that note i'm going to sign off this is jeremy for practical it if you like this video please like comment share tell your friends to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video have a great day